15, Father, I pray, water my steps in your word. Please water my steps in your word. I want to walk worthy of my calling to fulfill. And when you order my steps, Lord, I'll do your blessed will. The world is ever changing, but you are still the same. And when you order my steps, I'll praise your name. Ah, I thank God, giving honor to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My dear friend, Robert Lacey. Uh, <laughs> We're going to be talking. <laughs> We're going to be talking because he's trying to mess with a brother. <laughs> and I thank God for his invitation because I don't take that lightly. Um, this is not something that's done on a regular. Um, for me, I've been in Delaware almost 17 years, and I can count on my fingers the number of people that have asked me to come to speak there because they don't know me. And I appreciate the pastor of this church, the, the angel of this house, Pastor Pearl Scott. Amen. Praise God. Thank you so much for allowing him to just to be even to ask me and for you to say yes, because she don't know me. <laughs> Amen. Well, I'll put it to you this way. She don't know me personally, but by the spirit, I know you know. Amen. And, and the chairman um, for today, um, Jim Wallace, the men's, men's fellowship breakfast. Give him a hand, y'all. Amen. And I tell you what. I, 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 I tell you what, we're going to get right into it because I ain't got that much time because this is a sermon that was, I, I, I'm not going to tell you, I started my life in, in God um, in 1996, January 21st, 1996 at the Gravel Hill Missionary Baptist Church, 525 Clinton Avenue in the city of Newark, New Jersey. I said Newark, not Newark, New Jersey. So that's what we say in Jersey, 07108. And I didn't know nothing about God because I wasn't raised up in church. And I came there to that church, and it was a Bible-believing, teaching church, and it started me on my way. And um, here I am. So we're going to get right into it. I'm going to do a brief word of prayer so I can do what I need to do for Arthur so we can give you what the Lord would have you to have on this day and time, any allotted time that I have. Amen. Gracious and eternal Father. I humbly come before you at this time, dear God, just to say thank you. God, I thank you. For you have watched over, protected, and kept me from the very last moment we had our last conversation up until now. No harm or danger has come to me because I have angels of protection that surround me. And as long as they're around me, if you be for me, don't matter who tries to come up against me. You are the great I am of Arthur's life. Now, Father, I'm going to ask that you forgive me for anything that I may have done from that very last moment all the way up until now. Be it by thought, word, or deed, if it wasn't pleasing within your sight, I need your forgiveness. Create within me that clean heart while renewing a right standing spirit within me. You see, I want to have the same attitude in mind that was found in your son, Jesus Christ. He had an attitude of selfless humility that he brought all the way from heaven to earth. And he had a mind to work because selfless humility puts you in direct alignment with obedience to work. And I'll be ever mindful to give you the honor, the praise, and the glory because that's what he did. Oh, my God, today I open up the hearts, minds, and understanding for anyone that comes up under the sound of my voice. I pray that they incline their ear to hear what the spirit of the living God is saying to each and every one of them. Now, as for me, I'm just a bond servant of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And I just need the words that are going to come up out of my mouth. The meditation that you have already found deeply, richly embedded within my heart be made acceptable in your sight, in your sight alone only. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer in the precious and master's name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, I pray with thanksgiving in my heart. Amen. 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 And just to give you a little quickness of, of background, I am uh, I am here in Delaware, Wilmington, and I am a member of the Cornerstone Fellowship Baptist Church um, on 20 West Lee Boulevard, uh, um, 20 West Lee, y'all, uh -huh. <laughs> Wilmington, Delaware, 19802. Our pastor and founder is Reverend Dr. Donald E. Dunnigan, Senior and the First Lady Regina Dunnigan, but I'm a part of an international ministry called the Network Faith Evangelism Association Worldwide Fellowship out of Nassau, New Providence. Bahamas. I got a whole list of things that allowed me to call myself an apostle because I ain't calling myself, but it's, God has put me in that position. Let's get started, Arthur. We're in Psalm 133 to verse 1. And I'm going to read it to you from the New Living Translation. If you have a Bible, if you have King James, it may sound something close to it, but it's the New Living Translation, and it's where I'll be. The first verse. How wonderful and pleasant it is when brothers live together in harmony. Thus is the reading of God's word. The word of the Lord is already blessed. 
May he continue to bless the hearing, reading, doing of his holy and blessed word. For the Bible says, be a doer of the word and not just only a hearer. The thing that we're working with is brothers working together for the Lord. Now that's important to understand because the Bible tells us that it's a good thing for us to come together. And the reason why it's a good thing for us to come together because it is the ministry that Jesus Christ had when he was sent down from heaven to earth. You see, at one time, we were connected to our Lord. and We were connected to God, the Father. It started in the Garden of Eden when he said, let us make man in our image and likeness. In the image and likeness of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. And then he showed how he wanted the relationship to be with him when he took what he said. It wasn't good for that man to be alone. Y'all know the scriptures. Go to Genesis 2.18 and work your way down to Genesis 2.23. Because Genesis 2.24 says, so shall a man leave his father and his mother and cling to his wife. And the two shall become one flesh. Can I take you to Ephesians? 5.31 says the exact same thing. But verse 32, people really need to pay attention to because he said, this is a great mystery. But I speak of the relationship between Christ and the church. Mm-hmm. Matthew 25 tells you that we are the bride, we are expected bride of Christ. So God expects us to join together with him in marriage. And the Bible says in Matthew, the 19th chapter, the sixth verse, what God has joined together, let not man separate. Uh, brothers working together in, in, in for the Lord. One thing that we have to understand, brothers, is that we got to come together and we got to be willing to be about our father's business. Because too many of us, we, we have, we have business, but we got our own business. And God ain't, he ain't pleased with that because he did not call you out here to be doing your own thing. He did not call you to do that. I don't care how anointed you are. I don't care how gifted you are. I don't care what your results are, but if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing for God, you ain't doing nothing. You ain't doing nothing. Because he says you have to do that what Jesus Christ said. I came to do the will of the Father that sent me. What he tells me to do, that's what I do. That was God saying that he listened to the Father. Because on this earth, he was the Son of Man. He represented all of us. He was showing us the way. We lost the way. Through Adam. Through Adam. Adam, poor Adam, poor Adam. (laughs) The Bible says that after his wife, Eve, got deceived by the devil and tricked, although I don't think it was a trick, (laughs) I think that the devil caught her doing what she should not have been doing. She was looking at that tree the wrong way. That's why he stepped to her. Can I help you real good right here? This is a sidebar. Don't you know that any time the devil steps to you, he don't step to you from your strength, your spirit. He steps to you from your flesh. And what he's walking to and fro up and down on the earth seeking what he can devour, he's looking for that, that sin principle, that nature within you that represents what's in him to show up because he knows it's in us because he knows our tendencies. And as soon as it shows up, that's your door. Matter of fact, there was a TV show on HBO back in the day called True Blood. Anybody remember that? Yeah. The, 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 the vampire could not, he could knock at the person's house. And he'd be standing there, but he couldn't come in unless they invited him in. You know how you invite the devil in? When you show your flesh. When you show you got something on your mind that takes you back to where the Bible says you were called out of darkness into the marvelous light. He said walking in light. Darkness is sin. Light is holiness. And then you have to go through a process of transformation according to Romans 12 too, so that you don't act the way that you used to do when you used to be a sinner. Yeah, I used to drink party hard back in the day. I'm from Buffalo, New York, and if y'all have seen me back then, you would have swore I was Rick James twin. Because <laughs> I had the hair down here. Uh-huh. Oh, let me tell y'all something, ladies. I had curls, but they weren't Jerry. I did not do soul glow on your couch when I got up. Because like bro said, I was drinking some high-class cognac. I wasn't just drinking high-class cognac. I was wearing tailor-made clothes. I was not going to mess up my clothes with no drip, drip, drip on my stuff. I had a dry curl. A dry curl. It was called leisure. Uh-huh. And I had gold tapers all up in my grill. That was then, but this is now. The Lord has brought me from a mighty, mighty, mighty long way. But brothers, when, when, when God says that we should be working together, he's trying to get us to understand this. That the work that needs to be done down on here, do you know? Oh, God, let me. I'm glad we got women here. I pray, you know what I was thinking? I almost said this, God. I'm going to say it now anyway. Because the way I was looking at the seating, I was looking around. I said, this ain't Geno Jennings Church, is it? <laughs> Men sitting here. Women sitting over there. <laughs> That's just the way I flow. 
<laughs> so, so no, no. But you know what? Here's the thing that we need to understand. The importance of thing that God wants us to realize in working together is because there's a work that needs to be done. And our men needs to be setting forth the example for those that God gave him. When the Bible says that when God dealt with the, the serpent, then he went to the woman. He says, you know what? Because when you did what you did, allow that devil to do that to you. Yo, yo you're going to have you're going to birth children. But it's going to be rough on you than it should have been. And your desires are going to be for your husband. And he's going to rule over you. You know what we did, men? We went to Webster's, uh, Miriam Webster's. We went to Cambridge, Oxford, all them dictionaries. Looked up the word rule and said, oh, it's good to be the king. That ain't what he was talking about. That ain't what he was talking about. What he was talking about was he's establishing order on this earth as it is in heaven. Because the model prayer says, our father who art in heaven. How be thy name. Watch this. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There's authority when God sets up an organization such as mankind, male and female. In any organization, you have to have a head. You've got to have hierarchy. You've got a pastor here. You've got a shepherd over this church. You cannot operate without somebody leading and setting an example. So God has said well, that man was going to be the example for the woman. He's going to cover her. That's why the Bible tells you that a woman, she can't be sitting up in the church prophesying, doing anything with her head covered because a man is her covering. The man doesn't cover his head because God is his covering. And it was all about organization, the order of God, because he, he's a God of two things, order and balance. So what God is saying, men, we have to step up and begin coming together in harmony. Can I help you understand something real good right here? Here's something that people misconstrue from Acts the second chapter, the first verse. And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, the Bible says that they were all gathered in one place in one accord. Can I help you understand that real good? That one place don't mean that they, well, one place is, okay, we're going to say locality. The one accord don't mean this, that everybody sitting up in here was had a monolithic way of thinking. It don't mean that you was all thinking the same way, acting the same way. What it means is, is that when Jesus Christ told his disciples, and can I help you understand something else again? He chose 12. He only had 11 after he got rid of Judas Iscariot. Well, Judas Iscariot got rid of his own self. So, uh-huh. And then he, they did a, they did a, a lot picking in Acts 1 to come up with the second, the, the 12th one. But don't you know that Jesus Christ and his congregation in three and a half years, he only had 120 members? There was 120 in that upper room. Disciples, they were not. See, a disciple is a follower of Jesus Christ. He just handpicked 12. But anybody that followed him, and even you today, you are a disciple. So he had 120. And the Bible says that Jesus told him to go and wait for the promise of the Holy Ghost. That's the one accord. And man, that's the harmony that God needs us to come to. You can come with your perspective. You can come with your background. You can come with what you know. But when you come together in the name of the Lord, that ought to unify you. That ought to put you in harmony. Because guess what? I can say anything I want to you. But when I invoke the name of the Lord, we all ought to be on one accord. Why? Because the work of the body will not get done until we all come to unification as one. That's why the church is in the way it is universally. It's just dysfunctional. We're totally dysfunctional. We're operating on this premise, on that premise. You know what? I speak a different language, okay? I'm separated over here. I got different ethnicity, okay? I'm separated right there. Nationality, I'm separated. Socioeconomics, I'm separated. Denominations, I'm separated. Where's that in the word? Where's that in the word? The Bible says there's one body, many parts of that body, but they all work together as one. Why? Because there's, you know what Jesus Christ said? I'm going to get done with you real quick. Jesus Christ said this when he was praying in the 17th chapter, and he prayed a prayer for his disciples. He said, Father, make them one as we are one. Can I help you understand something real good about math? This is going to blow your mind because we have a tendency to believe that in order for you to have effective power, you need to have a multiplicity of people. That's why we have the advent of the mega churches. They're growing big in numbers. They're building big edifices. Matter of fact, the edifice don't look nothing like what a church should look like. I'm from the 60s. I am born in 1950s. I lived in the 60s. I know Motown. I was going to seeing 
Oh my God, the temptation, the miracles, uh, uh, the stylistic, all them guys. And we had uh, two places in Buffalo as venues, the Klein Hands Music Hall and Shades Buffalo. I go into a church today and that's what I see. A stage, an elaborate stage telling me that that's a, that, that, that's a, well, no, they ain't going to, no, whatever they want to call it. And then in that whole presentation, it's just like a, it's like a performance. You got well rehearsed, well rehearsed choirs. The Bible says make a joyful noise, but everybody on pitch. Everybody on pitch. And then they went out and got some musicians that are totally professional. And all they do is just show up like it's a gig. They don't carry no Bible. They don't. Go, let me tell you something. If I was pastoring right now, if I had musicians, or oh, every one of them gonna be in Sunday school, they're gonna be in Bible study. You're gonna have to be in relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I ain't be paying you to come up here and perform because you're bringing up all these spirits that you're picking up out there from that club that you're just coming from. Uh huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and then not only that, they do it like this. Now I ain't got nothing against these ministries. They got. They got flag, they flag dancing, they got praise dancing, they got drama clubs, and then they get to the main event. And then they do like, well, what the, uh, somebody who said they had like hip hop up in here, they got a group called Public Enemy. That's a, that's a drug store trying to tell me about my drugs. <laughs> I'm trying to get them off that medication. <laughs> but, but, but yeah, they got, they, got, they got this here group called Public Enemy. Public Enemy is a real good, a great uh, hip-hop uh, group, and, and their spokesperson, Chuck B, he's really good. But then he got a hype man, Flavor Flavor, and he walks around with a big clock around, and he be walking around hyping up, uh, uh, yeah, boy! Now here's what they do at the church. Here's what they do at the church. Before the pastor come out, you got somebody saying, oh, y'all, y'all ready for the word? Here comes the pastor, you know them, you love them, and you know what they're going to do. And the pastor, and here they come, he or she, and he comes out there saying, come on, is that all you got to show? And they get all hyped up. And then when they speak, when they read the scriptures, they read word. I'm going to give them that, they read word. But from that point on, you don't hear no word. You hear a well-crafted story about this, that, and the other. And what is it designed to do? To get you to dance and shout and scream and holler, foam at the mouth. I'm here, this is my, this is me. I'm sorry. I know what it says about preaching. How can they preach unless they can get? I know about that. I know that's in the word. But let me tell you something. If I preach you silly up in here and you don't know what I'm talking about, what have I done for you? You know what I did? I took you to a place that a drug takes you. You get real high. Anybody know anything about drinking drugs, doing drugs and alcohol? You get to a certain level high and then you come down and you ain't got nothing. The Bible says that wisdom is the principal thing. But in all you're getting, get you some understanding. Can I help you real quick right here? Wisdom is the application of knowledge. But I'm here to tell you, you ain't going to be able to apply no wisdom to no knowledge if you don't even know what you're applying. That's why we have to come together. Because we have to get together and learn the word so you can go and teach the word and show for. Can I? Oh, I'm going to finish right with this one right here. The word of God says, let that light shine forth from within you so that people might see your good works and glorify the Father that's in heaven. Now, many people might think it's the tangible works of, of God working in your life. That ain't what it is. No, sir. No, ma'am. The works that God wants to see from you is the work of the Holy Ghost in your life, getting you transformed from drinking all that alcohol back in the day, looking like Rick James and, and that, that and the other. Because why? The Bible says if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Behold, all things old have passed away. You ought not be looking like you were still in 1970 if you were a child of God in 2024. Because God expects a change. He expects a transformation to happen in your life. If it's not happening, you ain't pleasing him. And that's what brothers working together for the Lord is all about. Come together, do the work of the Father, be about your Father's business. And you know what? You want to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Be about your Father's business. 